The first Ratchet and Clank game is easily one of the best games to ever make its way onto the PlayStation 2, and subsequently into the homes of kids around the world. Ratchet and Clank was a rare case of some dudes pitching their idea to Sony, and after a few iterations, it becomes a mass produced commercial success over the course of 20 years. We were really surprised how quickly Ratchet came together. Ratchet started as this really small, scrappy cat type thing, then kind of a much taller dog-like creature. And what I ended up doing was actually taking these two forms and putting them together. And that's pretty much how we ended up with them. Sony Interactive Entertainment greenlit three direct PS2 sequels, a mobile game, two spin-offs, six PlayStation 3 games, three of which were main entry sequels, and the other three of which were kind of spin-off-y in nature. There was an HD remaster of the PS2 games for the PS3, and another mobile game, there is a three year gap from the PS3 games until there is a feature length film adaptation coinciding with the game on the PS4 to go along with the movie that reworked the original 2002 story until finally we arrive in 2022 where the most recent game was released in the summer of 2021 for the PS5. That's a lot of games and that's a lot of these two characters right here. But what actually made Insomniac crack the code of timelessness? The only place to start is where it all began. Ratchet & Clank, also known as Ratchet & Clank, is a third-person 3D action platformer made by Insomniac Games, released in 2002 for mass consumption. Ratchet being a dog-cat hybrid bipedal furry and Clank is basically what you get after peeling the label off a can of soda pop. Ratchet is the dude we are in control of for about 95% of the game. He does the jumping, the flying, the hoverboarding, the shooting, the killing, the slaughtering. And he forms a relationship with Clank only on the basis of both having different goals, but having to use the same path to get there. Interesting. Yay! You're quite handy with your wrench. You bet. I built that ship with it. But Ratchet is callous. He's self-centered and a bit detached from the world. Currently, I'm in search of someone who could be of assistance in saving the solar system. Do you know where I might find that fellow? Well, he's on the radio every week. Other than that, no. Hey, what's with all this save the solar system stuff anyway? The people on those planets are hosed. Well, good luck getting Captain Quark to help you. But he has a contradicting sense to adventure in it. He's like this because he's been living in this world where so many things are out of his control. Whoa, this is great! So that's where I've been stuck this whole time. What others do, where he was born, even the very ship he constructed with nothing but Velden dust and a wrench can't be used without some kind of additional piece he has no way of accessing other than the sheer luck of Clank showing up at the right time. I, sir, happen to be equipped with the latest in robotic ignition systems. My programming allows me to start any ship I choose. Ratchet only takes action when it's about something that will personally affect him, and those actions aren't exactly moral all the time. He is threatened. taken advantage of. Look, I, I, I need to get out of here so I can find a new job. How about I sell you these? At cost. Sell? After we just saved your scrawny butt? All right, all right. I'll give you the employee discount too. Bribed. You see how it works. You grease the hinges, the door opens. And murdered throughout the story because the universe has tried to do exactly that right back to him. And because of that, Ratchet's only extrinsic concern is self-preservation. In a conversation with Quark, Quark says that Ratchet has the skill set to be a hero. You mean you want our help? Look, Ratchet, I've been keeping an eye on you. I've never seen anyone with such raw talent. You are a true hero in the making. Really? Heroism is a trait that usually is defined by one's selflessness. And Ratchet contradicts Quark's assessment by following up with... Really? You mean... I could be famous? Oh, absolutely. It's such a subtle piece of dialogue that someone might not even notice that it highlights Ratchet's motivations perfectly. But it also highlights what it means to be heroic in this type of galactic social structure. Clank, on the other hand, was just born, like not even a day ago. Yeah. 
He has no idea about the world, but he has certain innate beliefs bestowed upon him. Those beliefs seem to be along some lines of unconditional empathy for others. Gratch, Channel 2 News. Did you see that? Yes, I hope that poor woman is all right. Ah, uh, she's fine. I think. The desire to do good without expecting something in return. It is not too late to stop Dreck. Hey, yeah! Clank also wants freedom from tyrannical businessmen, reflective of the capitalist machine that creates artificial demand to buy and resell fundamental components that necessitate life as we know it. Clank wants to revolt against a system. In other words, Clank hey, is based. Hey, but, but from the perspective of Ratchet, Clank is naive. This is it. Quark is going to help us stop Cheb and Drek. Why, thank you, Clank. You've been most helpful. Get off of me, you idiot! <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together! What do you mean? What do you think he means, genius? He's not gonna help us, he's gonna kill us! You. He thinks too much, he's too willing to see the good in others, and nothing solidifies Ratchet's feeling about Clank more than when Clank was too trusting of Captain Quark on planet Umbris and nearly costed Ratchet and Clank their lives at the hands of someone they thought they could trust. I wonder what that infobot is for. Maybe it can replace you. And that's how Ratchet and Clank foil one another. If you also fell asleep in 7th grade English class, foils are essentially two characters with opposite traits that, when interacting, intentionally strengthen contrast between the two for the audience. And this can create both narrative tension and dramatic effects and a whole bunch of other things I'm not smart enough to identify. But for the purposes of this video, the foil creates a strong divide between Ratchet and Clank, especially at the previously mentioned turning point in the story where Quark tries to get them killed. You don't know anything about me! I know that you will do the right thing. From that point forward, Ratchet blames two others for his setbacks and failure, which may or may not be justified. But he blames Clank for falling for the trap, but he hates Quark a lot more for setting the trap. Well, right now the thing I want to do is find Quark. But I think this is ultimately a mask for him to not blame himself for not acting on his doubts sooner, or not seeing through Quark's facade faster. Ratchet internalizes this and refuses to see the bigger picture for a good chunk of the story following. Now do you understand why we must stop him? He won't rest until he has destroyed every planet in the galaxy. Yeah? Well, I got bigger fish to fry. Bigger than the galaxy? Well, different fish anyway. Ratchet projects onto Clank. Is that all you can think about? Drek this and Drek that? I got my own problems. When all Ratchet can think about himself is Quark this and Quark that. And Clank rightfully points out that... If you cannot see the importance of this situation, you do have problems. Ratchet's problems could not possibly be more important than the fate of the galaxy. Despite the constant fighting, they still continue their mutualist relationship because either of them would be stuck without the other. Clank is too small to defend himself and cross large distances and hold guns, and Ratchet can't fly ships, glide, hover, or ground slam and swim fast without Clank and his upgrades. Right now they need each other, but they also hate each other, and that's a great dynamic, I love it so much. It's like some Woody and Buzz, Russell and Carl, or some Obito and Kankashi type stuff that I can never get enough of. The more Clank pushes back on Ratchet and the more Ratchet has to visit worlds that Drek is actively destroying or trying to destroy, the more dissonance Ratchet feels between his own personal goals and what he knows he should be doing. Ratchet keeps trying to force himself to be callous, so much so that when Clank gets the obviously cooler jetpack, Ratchet yawns and downplays his real feelings because he's supposed to not like Clank right now, and Ratchet is a petty king. I've got it. I'll have you fixed up faster than a horny toad a hopping. <laughs> well, there you are, little buddy. Better than new. That's right. I am the man. <sighs> yeah, not bad. Eventually, Ratchet sees that Planet Hoven is about to be bombed, straight up, and he starts realizing. And while he insists to Clank that his goals are still out of personal vindication, Clank sees through it and starts to see Ratchet coming over to his side of the aisle. Now this guy's gonna blow up an entire planet? That's just... me. That's what I've been telling you. Look, I'm still gunning for Quark. If we end up taking out Drek too, hey, fine. What? You do care. Don't push it, pal. Ratchet still keeps up those walls he's been building for a while, but they are finally beginning to crumble. After Quark's defeat on Gamlik Base, Ratchet fulfills his desire for revenge. And before they see that infobot of Ultanus, Ratchet is celebrating their success while Clank is trying to see the macro of the situation. 
Clank does concede that Ratchet has become good at piloting, but Ratchet thinks Clank is still too uptight. Yes! Quark is history! Despite my earlier criticism, I must admit, your piloting skills are improving. I knew you'd come around. But that has not helped us locate Drek. Come on, Clank, can't you just once relax and enjoy a little success? Hey, you want to catch Drek? Bet you this baby can do it. From each perspective, it's completely understandable how either party comes to either conclusion. That is until the Infobot. This once peaceful planet is being torn apart today in an unprovoked attack. It now seems certain that Supreme Executive Chairman Drek will not be dissuaded in his efforts to destroy the galaxy for his own selfish needs. All hope certainly seems lost. Telegratch, Channel 2 News. Um. Yes, I know. It is worse than I expected, too. Look, maybe you were right. This is a lot bigger than you or me. I was really selfish focusing on Quark. It is not too late to stop Drek. Hey, yeah! We've got this new ship! Let's go get him! Now you are talking. Both of them are shocked at the wake of destruction left behind by Drek's war machine, and this is the first time Ratchet is able to admit his character flaw, and he begins to see the macro of the full situation about 80% of the way through the story. You know, better late than never, as they say. Down on Altanus, we get to see the first time Ratchet is concerned for someone's safety, and it's after Clank gets absolutely slammed by lightning. Clank? Clank? Come on, wake up! Captain Quark? <laughs> no, goofball. It's me, Ratchet. What happened? You got toasted by lightning. This place is having one heck of a storm. You won't be safe out there. I'll be right back. Ratchet offers to explore the planet for information alone so that Clank can be safer inside the ship. I don't think Clank is quite used to this yet though, as we'll see later on. Another funny moment is that despite Ratchet's continuous ideation of fame and being famous, when he does get to speak on that desire in reality after winning the second hoverboard race, he kind of chokes really hard out of nervousness, but Clank nails it. That was terrific! Now I just needed to say a few words about our hot new boards! Huh? Now? Of course. Just look into that camera right over there and say what comes naturally. Rolling! Uh, hi. This is Ratchet for, uh, Gadgetron Hoverboards. And if you, um... Yo, dudes, for the freshest boards in the galaxy, check out the new XZ88 from Gadgetron. It's so hot, it's cool. I think I got the wrong guy. But after receiving the Hollow Guys and infiltrating the robot factory, Clank finally gets to reunite with his mom after so long. She gives him some information that finally gives Ratchet the push he needs to fully commit to taking Drek down. That should do it. Mom? Oh, brother. I tried, Mom. I know. Hey, look! A sister! My fellow Blob, our synthetic world is now fully functional and ready for habitation. However, there is one small obstacle in our way. This pathetic lump of a planet. Due to some blunder of fate, it happens to occupy the galaxy's most perfect orbit. But no more. Behold, the Deplanetizer! The most powerful laser ever created. Soon, we'll move the deplanetizer into place just above the planet's surface. I will, of course, be on hand to press the button that will blow this mud ball to smithereens. No one will even miss it. See you then. Ratchet, are you all right? He is going to pay. Excuse me? It shouldn't have taken me this long to see it. Drek is going to find out what happens when you mess with my home. What are you smiling at? This is the ratchet I always knew was there. Okay, if we're gonna do this, we need to get onto Drek's ship. And then we can find out where he set up that laser. I will try to make you proud, Mom.
Of course though, it's still a push based on Ratchet's original goal of self-preservation. He doesn't want his own planet to be destroyed, but he was never in a rush to prevent Drek from destroying any of the other planets where conscious beings just like him also live. Clank gets a nice resolution that ties up his arc. Since Clank was kind of already extrinsically motivated, the talk with his mom reveals his intrinsic motivation was to make mom proud. Man, if that doesn't yank your heart out, I don't know what will. Once Ratchet and Clank are working together, with a combined effort of Giant Clank and Ratchet's gun skill in the end, they tie it all up with another cutesy callback Pixar cutscene. Ratchet is thinking what Clank is thinking. Hang on! There's an old defense turret over there! Hey, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I sincerely doubt it. Ratchet? What's up? You know, this time I am thinking what you're thinking. This can't be good. Phew, that was close. Uh, Clank, you can <laughs> pull us up now. The servos in my arm appear to be broken. Broken? As in fall to our deaths broken? Uh, yes. That was close! Thanks! My arm appears to be badly damaged. Ah, you'll be alright. Just when you think it's the end of the pair, and the mutual goal is finally achieved, Clank turns away in realization of the fact that he'll have to fix his arm alone. Hey, Tin Can! Only for Ratchet to come back for him, the first time he's ever expressed interest in doing something for someone else. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? We, uh still need to fix that arm. All of the narrative beats and the construction of the world itself have culminated to this moment to where the foils finally become friends after they both experience character growth as a result of each other and the actual plot itself. It's beautifully written and it's beautiful that the game survives 20 years later. Funny enough, I think Rivet and Rift Apart has a much more similar arc to the 2002 Ratchet than the Ratchet in a lot of the contemporary games. I also really like the stories of Deadlocked and Crack in Time because I think they're uniquely better than the other games. So if you want to see a vid on Rift Apart or Deadlocked or Ace It, do let me know down below in the comments uh, and like the video. My sub goal that I asked for a couple of videos ago was completely blown out of the water, so thank you all for that. I don't really have anything special planned at the moment because I think that just making videos is the best I can do for celebrations. But do follow my Twitter to get updates when content comes out or if I'm doing anything cool in the future. Do also consider dropping a dollar to the Patreon if you have the income and if you want to. Uh, I'm in school right now, so videos take a lot longer to make and the closer I get to surviving on YouTube, the more I get to make videos and that's what I love at the end of the day. But other than that, we'll see y'all in the next one. Smile.